wheat. Earth and sky and western wheat. The river of yellow grain that flows for a thousand miles across the western plains. It's fall on the Canadian prairies and a half billion bushels of grain are ready for harvest. Wheat farming is often a gamble, but the good years make up for the lean, and there's a fine crop this year, heavy in the swath. The straw is dry, the kernels firm and ripe, and with judgment born of many seasons, the wheat farmer knows that today it's ready to thrash. Harvest is a busy time on the western wheat farm. Every member of the family has a job to do when thrashing starts. It's also a time for haste. Rain or snow could bring disaster to the crop. The weeks of waiting for the wheat to ripen have been anxious ones. Everyone's eager to get started. And now the wheat's ready, there's not a moment to lose. to thrash while the fine weather lasts, every minute counts. From swath to combine and combine to truck, nothing must delay the abundant flow of grain. his judgment on every truckload of grain he buys. Number one northern is the verdict on this one, and that's good news. From farms large and small across the vast acres of three prairie provinces, wheat pours into the country elevators. Green 
cars moving eastward pass through in thousands on their way to the terminal elevator. Grain inspectors enter the cars as soon as they arrive and with their probing rods gather samples at various levels from seven different positions in each car. The country elevator operator has made his estimate of the grade, but here, for the protection of both seller and buyer, all the wheat is sampled and graded according to precise government standards. No car or shipment can proceed on its way until a proper sample for grading has been taken. And this happens to the wheat every time it passes through railway inspection points or ocean ports in Canada. The samples go directly to the Board of Grain Commissioners inspection offices. Here, experts deftly judge the quality of the wheat by a series of exacting and complicated tests, combining the precision of scientific standards with the skill of the professional wheat grader. Individual farmers, if they choose, may have their wheat graded by this system, rather than accept the grade established at the country elevator. Weight per bushel is important. Good wheat will usually weigh between 60 and 65 pounds a bushel. The wheat is then screened with a fine sieve to separate the weed seeds and bits of foreign matter that lower the quality of the sample. This little machine sifts out the wild oats and other stuff missed by the screen. The skillful grader has an intimate knowledge of the look and feel of wheat. The authority of many years' experience guides him in establishing an accurate and dependable grade. The Board of Grain Commissioners does much more than just grading. For the information of buyers and users of Canadian wheat in all parts of the world, its research laboratories make tests on samples from different wheat-producing areas for milling, moisture, protein and baking qualities. For the protein test, a quantity of ground-up wheat is weighed out and placed in a long-necked flask. Powerful chemicals dissolve the wheat. Then, by distillation and other kinds of scientific sorcery, the chemist obtains a colored liquid from which he learns important facts about what kind of bread this flour will make. After this, flour from the wheat being analyzed is made into dough and tested in several different ways. Scientists have discovered that the quality and texture of bread depend to a great extent on the tensile strength of the dough. The more it stretches, the better the loaf will be. of quality and dependability in the grades of Canadian wheat. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, trains and ships carry wheat to the great mills where it will be made into flour. fed into a series of milling machines where the kernels are cracked between steel rollers. A continuous process of grinding and sifting reduces the grain to a fine powder. The flour is separated from the bran and middlings and in the purifiers the remaining fine bran is lifted out with a blast of air and brushed to one side. Finished flour is bagged, ready to be shipped to bakeries here and abroad. Flour manufactured from Canadian hard wheat has a worldwide reputation for its excellent bread making qualities. In a large modern bakery, 
factory, manpower is still used for dumping bags of flour into the mixing machine. But the daily bread of a push-button age goes through most of its processes barely touched by the hands of man. Flour is mixed with yeast, milk, sugar and shortening and other ingredients and made into dough. size buns and rounded into shape. Then they're sprinkled with flour and sent round the conveyor in the dry fruiter to give them a bit of a rest. come out, they're flattened, flipped, and rolled into shape for the baking tins. After a quick trip through a moist chamber, where the dough rises to fill the baking tins, they're ready for the automatic ovens, which bake thousands of loaves an hour. foot giants, the loaves pour out with production line efficiency. of the insect, the parasite and the fungus. As the wheat stem sawfly, the larva of this insect lives and feeds in the stems of the plant, cutting them down as neatly as a scythe. The larva soon forms a cocoon and next year the adults emerge to begin another cycle of destruction. They look quite innocent now. But in a few days, they'll be laying their eggs by the thousands in wheat stems. Eggs that will soon become larvae with a craving for young wheat. And there's the dreaded red rust. This fungus disease infects the growing wheat, stunts and shrivels the grain before it ripens. In 1935, it destroyed more than one quarter of the whole Canadian wheat crop. Starting in the spring from bulbous clusters on the leaves of common wild barberry, the deadly spores carried by the wind threatened disaster to all wheat within their reach. To carry on the fight against insects and the diseases of wheat, there is one major weapon, the science of plant breeding. From among hundreds of different wheat varieties, Scientists search for plants with natural resistance to a particular disease or insect. Their seeds are planted on thousands of test plots at Canada's experimental farms. At 
As they develop, the plant breeder selects those which continue to show resistance and crosses them with others whose grain is of high milling and baking quality. From the results of these crosses, he selects promising individual plants and makes further crosses. The work involved is tremendous and may require several years. Season by season, out of thousands, there will be only a few worthy to be singled out for further work. To make the final cross, outstanding types are chosen. In this case, one for its natural resistance to rust and the other for its high baking qualities. These will be the parents of the new variety. The scientists call this emasculation. It's an essential part of plant breeding. By extracting the pollen-bearing stamens from each little flower of one plant, they make sure it will be fertilized only by the pollen from the other. Thus, they guide the destiny of their offspring. A small paper bag protects the newly mated pair from fertilization by other varieties. As a new variety is being developed, its resistance is tested by exposing the plants to sawfly infestation and severe epidemics of rust. In the field experimental plots, for several years after a promising strain has been developed, it is tested for yield, height, time of ripening and other important qualities. If it passes these tests, a new variety is born and its birth may have consumed 16 arduous years of the plant breeder's life. From a few precious seeds has come a new wheat. This little harvest is the forerunner of greater harvests to come. For more than half a century, the men of science have fought a relentless battle to keep disaster from driving the wheat farmer from the prairies. But the battle never ends, for as one enemy is conquered, others attack. And to defeat them, new strong wheats must be bred. From the efforts of dedicated men have sprung the great names in wheat. Marquis, Thatcher, Regent, Redmond, Rescue, Saunders. The wheats that opened up the West. Down through the years, the growth and prosperity of a young nation has followed the men with the plow and the drill. Men of Belgium, France, and Holland, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Men from the crowded fields of Europe, wedding new methods to older skills. Toughs of the town and toughs of the city. Brawn and breeding in denim shirts, busting sod from Lepar to the Rockies, sowing a future in prairie earth. from seed of a thousand plantings, western wheat from a western soil, sweeping green to the taut horizons, bushels of wealth for the hours of toil. Springing, spreading, stretching, heading, filling, ripening to a sea of wheat. Waving, whispering, shimmering, glistening from Winnipeg's lake to the mountain's feet. Machines for cutting, machines for swathing, machines for thrashing and hauling grain, chugging, chattering, roaring, rattling, men and machines, machines and grain, grain from Rosetown, grain from Grenfell, grain from Red Deer, Moose Jaw, Melville, Saskatoon, Brandon, Regina, Watrous, Okotox, Oxbow, Suris, Glamis. speeds the wheat on its way.
yellow grain flows on toward the end of its journey into the storage tanks awaiting transfer to the ships and trains. Fort William terminals, lofty citadels of concrete and steel, monuments to the grain which built them, heart of Canada's wheat trade. Down from the tanks, a million roaring bushels of western wheat. Down from the lakehead's massive granaries, tested and sampled by vigilant inspectors. Guaranteed by Canada's certificate final. Prescott, Montreal, Port Colborne, Toronto. Ships loaded to the gunnels for Bombay, Rotterdam, Rome and London. Wheat. 